Thank you, Lord. Oh, what an awesome morning. We can sing praises. Every breath in our lungs, we sing praise to him this morning. Amen. What a blessing and an honor to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so grateful that you have joined us this morning. We say good morning to all our friends and family all over the world. Good morning to all our friends and family in India and in Saudi Arabia and Mexico and New Jersey and South Carolina, Virginia, and every state in the nation, yeah. in every country. Hallelujah. We say blessings to you, brothers and sisters. It's an honor and a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we would like to start this morning asking you if you have any prayers, any requests for prayers. We'd love to pray for you. If you can please text your prayer request to 407-490-4019. Again, the number is 407-490-4019. We're here willing and ready to pray for you. The word says, we're two or more gathered in my name, in his name, that there's power. And there's power in his Amen. word and his praises. Yeah. Amen. We're going to declare Psalm 91. If you can go to that with us and declare it together. We will declare it now. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of your mighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. And surely He shall deliver you from the spirit of power and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and is under His wings you shall take refuge. And His truth shall be a shield and your upward. You shall not be afraid of terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in the day. And a thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. And only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. And no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling place. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because they have known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing. And now let's welcome Pastor Shreve, who's going to bless us with the word. Pastor Amen. 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 That is awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for joining. And uh, this is an awesome day. Amen. Amen. God is good and God is wonderful oh, and is. He is getting ready to do some great things in yeah. your life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Something great is about to happen in my life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. All right, let's declare this. Something, Something great, great is getting ready to happen in my life. life. Amen. 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 All right. So the title of my message today, Strike the Shepherd. Strike the shepherd. Let's go with, with me to Psalm 23, which is one of my uh, favorite psalms, and uh, one of those things that uh, my mom made sure I recited. I can I can say this thing even in my sleep, mm -hmm. so I kind of know this psalm in uh, multiple languages also. Yeah. But anyway, um, let's go there, um, let's read this psalm, maybe together, if you are reading, please follow New King James Version. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. 
This is a wonderful uh, depiction for us about the Lord being our shepherd. Amen. As a Christian, as a, uh, a believer, we all know and we all come under this uh, um, covering that the Lord is my shepherd. So the role of a shepherd, the shepherd plays a predominant role in a Christian life. Especially in the Bible, as we go through that, you will see shepherd being refer, referred to so many times. And even when uh, Jesus was talking about it, uh, he would say, uh, my sheep will hear my voice also. Where he is assuming the place or where he is uh, presenting to us, I am your shepherd and you are my sheep. He gives that thing. So um, if you try to understand a few things here as a shepherd, shepherd is very responsible toward the sheep. And he's the one who cares for them. He's the one who feeds them. Uh, in this Psalm 23, you will see it very well that he will make you lie down in green pastures. You know, it's a great thing if the sheep has a shepherd. It's not the sheep's job to find where food is. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not sheep's job to find, okay, where am I going to get my next meal? It is the shepherd's job. Mm -hmm. The stray sheep are the ones that have to struggle. And that struggle. But if the sheep has the shepherd, then <clears throat> they are provided for and this morning, even though I'm going in a different direction, I want us to understand what your shepherd means to you. What is this uh, shepherd um, into our life? This is one of the things when we study this Psalm 23, you will see he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leaves me beside the still waters. And one of the most important things that I have used so many in so many of my battles, especially when we are going through crossroads. Have you ever been to, through crossroads? Mm -hmm. you, will, you are in places where you feel like, oh, uh, what am I going to do? Which direction I am going to go? Am I going to go to the right or are, am I going to go to the left? In such situations, such circumstances, we always... Um, get caught with confusion, get caught with desperation and all those kinds of things. But in here, there is a, 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 a place of rest where he says in the third verse, he restores my soul and he leaves me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When you don't know what to do, come to this scripture. Come to this one verse. Um, this, this one verse have never disappointed me in my battles. Whenever I was going through, uh, say, like the uh, crossroads or where I have to make a decision, what am I going to do now, God? Am I doing the right thing or not? Instead of trying to figure all those things out, I chose, okay, the Lord is my shepherd. And... He restores my soul, your mind, will, and emotions. He's the one who is going to restore, restore that to you. And then he says, he leads me in the paths of righteousness. Not for your sake, not because you are in need of it, not because you are struggling, but because for his name's sake. Amen. If you go astray, it is not upon the sheep. Remember that. It is the shepherd. Shepherd has to bring you back. It's his name. Yeah. On the line, not yours. You might think, oh my goodness, uh, how am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to do this? How, you know, my credit is going, uh, going south. How, how is this going to affect me? How is this going to infect me? No matter what you're looking at, I want us to take comfort in this fact that he leads you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Not for our sake, but for his name's sake. Amen. Isn't that comforting? Amen. I don't know about you. For me, whenever I see that scripture, I'm like, I'm not the boss. 
There is nothing that is, uh, um, I have to be worried about because he has to lead me. Now I come under that rest. I am the sheep and he is the shepherd. And it is his job to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And again, you know, if you don't own it, it won't work into your life. You got to believe and you got to receive it. When you do that, it is going to work into your life. What is the right thing to do? Hey, come here. He will lead you. Amen? Yeah, amen. So the uh, shepherd plays a very vital role for, uh, for the sheep. Um, shepherd is the point. He is the lead. He is the direction. He is the comfort. He is the provider. He is the financier. He is everything for the sheep. Amen? amen. So now... <clears throat> Even um, in our life, uh, even as Jesus was presenting himself as uh, a shepherd, uh, he is also presenting to us the weakness of it. There are certain things that we need to look at in a multidimensional uh, level. One, when, we, when Jesus presents certain things to us, he not only presents the strength of it, he also presents the weakness of it. Mm -hmm. What could this happen to you? How could this infect you? How could this affect you? Those kinds of uh, possibilities is up to us to explore. Amen? Amen. He said, seek ye. You, he wants us to seek so we can find. Amen? Amen. So now as soon as we are assuming the position, we are putting the position uh, uh, that Jesus is my shepherd, we should also understand what a shepherd can be into your life. Mm -hmm. So the, the title, as I have mentioned, Strike the Shepherd. What does that mean to me? Um, I would also want to conclude a shepherd is something or someone, like I, I want to present it that way. Uh, something or someone that provides, that protects, or even, let me put it as simple as this, it is the source of confidence. Amen. Shepherd is the source of confidence. Amen? Amen. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> in other words, the uh, what I am going after today is, a source in your life. So um, let's go. Go with me to the book of Matthew, twenty-sixth chapter, <clears throat> thirty-first words. Book of Matthew, twenty-sixth chapter, starting at verse thirty-one. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written... Now, now look at this thing. Jesus himself is saying, All of you. He wasn't leaving one person there. All the disciples that were with him will stumble. And imagine that part. Imagine, uh, try to uh, decipher that part. When you go through this thing, I mean like, you know, I am going to Jesus to have confidence. To have the place where I don't fall. To have the place where I am standing. But now Jesus himself says, for my sake you will stumble. And that, that for me looks like an irony, or it also, lo it also uh, looks like a contradicting statement. Isn't, aren't you the shepherd and you're not supposed to let me stumble? But he is saying, no, 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 for my sake you will stumble. <clears throat> and he clearly says, this night. You know, he was telling it to the uh, disciples, and uh, I would also want to make a statement there will come a time in our lives where you and me are prone to stumble. That's the reality of life. 
That's the reality of walking with Jesus. <clears throat> okay, keep reading, please. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. I will strike the shepherd. God himself is saying, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Come on, let's, well, let's focus on that word. Will be scattered. Scattered. They are going to be scattered. You know, the strike is going to the shepherd. But the reaction is going to the sheep. So somebody is getting infected and someone else is getting affected. So the strike is not to the sheep. But the strike went to the shepherd, but the sheep are the ones that are getting scattered. Okay, now let me simply put it this way. Your confidence is what is going to get striked, and you are the one that is going to get scattered. Mm. Mm. All right. So in all of our life, uh, we, uh, especially as a Christian, we use people, we use things, we use Pastors, we use pulpit, we use many things as a source of confidence. We use job, we use money, we use our intelligence. A lot of these things as our source of confidence. And now here he is, he is giving you a reality. Hey, I'm going to strike that thing and now you're going to be scattered. That for me seems like, okay, what are you doing, God? You are the one who is stirring the pot. I never asked for this thing. The disciples never asked for it. He went to, the, he went to Jesus to stick with Jesus. Isn't that right? Yet you see him here, the disciples, you see the disciples here, but they are not there. That they are going to be scattered. And we know the story. As it uh, goes down. We know all the disciples were scattered. But here something else is going on. Keep going please. But after I have been raised. I will go with After I have been what? Raised. Remember that. I will talk to you in a bit. <clears throat> I will go before you to Galilee. Again he says I will go before you. Not He's again taking the place of the shepherd. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's the one he says, you said, I lead you. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Peter answered and said to him, even if all of you are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. You know, this is the naive mindset of everybody. Not just believers. This is where maybe you will fall, not me. Maybe that person fell because he was playing with the fire. You know, a lot of the times I have seen many people, uh, when they start their, um, whatever the addiction is, they start with the fact, they know the fact that this could be an addiction. This could become an addiction. But they start with the, with the idea, with the mindset, thinking, hey, this is not going to harm me. I'm not that kind of a fool. I'm only going to take a sip of this thing or take a thing to one side, one, one thing or something like that. I remember in my life there was a, a lecturer in my life, a teacher in my life who taught me English. He was, uh, he never... Uh, tasted alcohol in his life up until he is 35. He never did. But at that time, he once started tasting alcohol. And when he started it, he told me his story. When he started it, he was doing it just as a distressor. He was so overwhelmed with the work that he needed a break, so he would just have a little bit of here and there. 
Fast forward it. I have met him again. After almost five years. Now, let me tell you something. He was begging me for a quarter. Mm -hmm. He was my teacher 10 years ago. And now he is asking me money or things like that to be able to pay for his children. Or to be able to take care of anything that is in his house. He was not able to pay the rents. He was not able to do any of those things because the alcohol have consumed his life. Yes. <clears throat> but when he started it, he thought, hey, I'm about this. And now I'm, I'm trying to tell you this thing. Being scattered is a quite common thing for you. It is going to happen in your life. That is the reality. Mm -hmm. Let us not fight it. Let us not resist it in the sense that where, where Peter was saying, no, no, no. Even if everybody is tempted, even if everybody falls down, I will not. Yes, I will not fall. I will not fail. That's why you have to understand, don't you ever overestimate yourself. You are prone for falling. Yes. That also gives the reason for us to also understand everything around us is prone to fall. Mm -hmm. Preachers will fall. Come on. Parents will fall. Yeah. Children will fall. Yeah. Governments will fall. Yeah. No matter what we think would work for us, we'll fall. Because there is a striking that is going on that is around us. It is always the, there is a strike that goes on um, from all kinds of uh, levels which is going to come and make you compromise. That's the most important part. You need to uh, understand that Jesus clearly gives the reality for us in this world, you will have tribulation. You will have trouble. You will have issues. You will have scattering. You will have it in this world. <clears throat> when we come to that reality, when we can understand, okay, hey, this is not going away. When we can come to that place of understanding that and realizing that, then you'll be able to deal with it. The problem with many of the Christians is we always think we are about it. Or we are ignorant of it. That is the place you are giving an open door for the devil to have a field day. Yeah. At your expense. Okay. You're making the devil successful. You're making the devil win. So here... Jesus says, but after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. There is a process, there is a time that you would be going where there is going to be a strike uh, uh, toward your shepherd. But that doesn't mean that is the end of it. Strike is not death. Amen. 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 I want us to understand this. Just because something got hit in your life doesn't mean it is game over. But when that hit has happened, what happens is the sheep will get scattered. Now, let me put it in a different way. Your emotions will get scattered. Your feelings will get scattered. Your process, the, 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 the place of confidence, the trust or whatever it may be, those things will get scattered. Now, I want you to understand something. There is... An allowed part from God, and at the same time, there is a devil taking advantage of that part. Mm -hmm. So, the best example you and me can have is um, the life of uh, Job. In that, G God gives the instruction to Satan saying, you can have anything, you can do anything to my son except his life. Mm -hmm. Don't touch his life. 
Amen? Amen. Isn't that what, what the instruction was? But what does he do? He goes to his wife and his wife says to him, uh, says to Job, uh, why don't you kill yourself? Now what is happening here? The scattering is becoming shattering. Mm -hmm. The devil is taking that which is scattered and trying to shatter. In other words, he's trying to bring it or bring him to a place where he can't be returned back. Where it can't come back. I'm just using the word shatter for rhyming because scatter and shatter will work. <laughs> uh, but some of you might be thinking, oh, I, even if something shatters, I can put it together. Yeah, I know. That's not what I'm talking about. The problem, the, the thing is, that which is scattered cannot be shattered. God's will, God's plan or God's provision, let me put it that way. God's provision here is, I will strike the shepherd so you will be scattered, but not shattered. Amen. He's clearly putting, you, putting us in a place, even though you might be going through this place of scattering, it is not a place that you cannot return back. That is what Jesus was making as a statement here, right? He says, "When, I, but after I have been raised, but after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. After I have been raised. So there is a time period where you might be going through this scattering, but that, is, that should not be a place where you will dwell permanently or give room for the devil to take you to a place where it is completely shattered. Many of us have God emotionally in our lives or somewhere in our, in our belief or certain things that we have come to a place of no return. Because we let the devil, that which was supposed to be scattered, we let the devil shatter. We let the devil take advantage of the scattering. You know, the scattering is part of God's plan. He always, you know, part of God's plan in the sense, he is always willing to let us go and reinvent ourselves, reprocess ourselves and come back to a better state. You know, we, we, you know, we have to, you need to understand these things, how these Bondings will happen. He is like, um, uh, th think of it uh, like making a dough. The flower gets scattered, but again the water brings it back. It everything, it goes back and comes back, goes back and comes back. By the time it comes, it comes to a different form and a different state. And at the end, it will bring you a different result. God is a porter, remember that. He is the clay. When he is dealing with this clay, there are times he would slap the clay. When the slap is happening, the clay gets spread out. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it is over. He is still working on it. Where he is going to bring it back. He is going to reform it. He is going to put it together to bring to a different state. Amen. 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 Refiner's fire. What does the refiner do? He puts that into the fire. What happens? That which was there is not in the same state. It has to go to a different state. It is being transformed. It is being, becoming translucent. It is getting into different stages so he may bring something out of it that Amen. could be of worth and value. Amen. Amen. But the problem here is not about the shepherd, but about the scattering. When you get scattered, you know, the scattered also has a word in it, and it is scare. Mm. When these people, when this has happened, the scattering has happened, what happened to all the disciples? They were scared. Mm -hmm. Amen. They were operating in that fear because they got scattered. When you and me get scattered, we immediately assume fear. 
We immediately get into the hold of fear. When we get into the hold of fear, all you are inviting into your life is destruction. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what the devil wants you to do. So today what I am calling is, our scattering should not become sharing. Should not come to a place it cannot return back. Mm -hmm. Because that is not God's will. God's will for us is never to be shattered, mm -hmm. to be hopeless, to come to a place there is no future. Sometimes right now when you are going through these things, that is kind of like a, a very important part of, of Christ's journey to the cross, which is our salvation. Amen? Amen. When you are on your path to victory or on your path to salvation, you will face this situation. There are things that are working for you. There are things that have built your confidence. I know this will work. I know this thing will work. You've been working on this thing. Now that very thing is getting strike. That very thing. And because that thing is getting done, that thing gets the strike. Now you have a choice. Either you go, I mean, like it also always happens. Like it happens, like simply, simply to put, like in church, we have leaders. You know, some, sometimes when we hear, oh, okay, this leader uh, have done something like this. When we come to know about their sin or their life or their, their things that they have done, it just, it just bothers you. It affects you. It infects you. It hurts you so much. I can't imagine my dad did this. I can't imagine my pastor have done this. I can't imagine this, this preacher have done this. I can't imagine this person is doing this. You know, when we go through those kinds of things, what happens? Your emotions will get scattered. Amen? Amen. And when those getting, the, the getting scattered, even though it is inevitable, that is not the end. Mm -hmm. That is not the end of the story. Mm -hmm. Go with me to the book of Ezekiel, please. 11th chapter. <clears throat> Ezekiel, 11th chapter. Starting at verse 16. Therefore say... Thus says the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Wherever they have gone, I still will be the sanctuary. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's a very powerful statement. No matter how scattered you have gotten, you have become, there I am still present there. Amen. Sometimes this is very, sometimes when you get disappointed, when you get uh, um, into a place where I'm like, man, this is one thing that is going for me. You know, a lot, a lot of people, they take comfort, they take confidence in many things, their own children. This is all I got. Or their bank balance. This is all I got. We come to that place, even in the spiritual world, we set certain things in our lives. We will come back to this thing. Go with me to the book of Matthew 17th chapter, please. While we are going to be uh, coming here, go with me to the book of Matthew 17th chapter, starting at verse 1. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. See, this is what we call as the uh, transfiguration, the Mount uh, Transfiguration, the experience of transfiguration. This is happening here, and it was happening right in front of their eyes. The Jesus that was walking with them, that, that Jesus that was dining with them, the Jesus that was uh, 
uh, sleeping with them and making all these miracles happen is now getting transfigured. He is becoming a, some, something supernatural, something spiritual, something phenomenal. A miracle is happening in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. But, but the miracles that are happening, there is, there is a, one of a, well, once in a lifetime experience is happening here. This never happened. They have never seen this before. Now remember, every disciple came to Jesus with certain expectations. They had a preconceived idea about Jesus. Now these three people, John, James, and Peter, who are the closest to him, who are allowed to experience this one, they are now creating a mindset for them. <clears throat> and behold, the third verse, go ahead please. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, is it good? It is good for us to be here. It he wasn't even asking them. He wasn't even asking Jesus or anything. He was assuming and he was making a statement. It is good for us to be here. Have you ever been in life where you felt like, man, this is the best part of my life? Mm -hmm. I wish this will not change. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes we look at things from, uh, from the future or from the now and think there is something in the past that was a great time. Mm -hmm. That was, those were the days. Mm -hmm. That was the time. That was when it was all the way. It is, you know, remember I used to read Bible. Oh, these many hours. I was passionate for God. I was this. I was that. I was sold out. And all those kinds of things. We think of those things. Mm -hmm. But somewhere, something happens to that moment. Right now, this is, this is something I want us to understand. There are... There are multiple layers for us to understand this thing. That place of confidence, that source of support, that, that, that inspiration, that comfort, that soothing, whatever it might be. There is a stronghold in our lives in a good way. There is a stronghold in our lives that always is going to get attacked. Yeah. Some of us can't digest certain things that could happen in my life. Mm -hmm. Because you have... A, a confidence there or you have a comfort there. If somebody was to take that away from you, you would be all over the world, all over the map. Mm -hmm. And God is giving, that is going to be taken away. It will happen. That which you think is the best might be hit. And when it gets hit, you might be scattered. You will be scattered. But that's okay. Here, Peter was like, he didn't want to let that moment go. He wanted to seal it. He wanted to freeze it. He wanted to freeze the time. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever uh, um, we talk about children... Um, the people that have older kids and stuff like that. Oh, hang on to them right now. <laughs> they keep saying that term. They keep saying those things. Oh, I wish they never grew, grow. Like, That's kind of a dumb idea. Mm -hmm. They have to grow. You know, I understand because, you know, every day today I have a great delight. Um, I had a lot of fun with my son when he was young. We did things. Right now, my daughter, she every day she comes and she uh, um, only goes to bed on me. It's a very great delight. And in the morning she wakes up, she cuddles with me and things like that. She looks for me, for, for her, uh, that comfort. And I'm like, oh, I feel all like, oh man, I'm achieving something. Mm -hmm. You know I'll be trash in two years, right, for her. <laughs> she won't even look at me. But anyway, <laughs> but that's, uh, we, we, we just want, oh, it should stay like this. We want to freeze that thing. Mm -hmm. That sort of mindset is what I am going after. That is, that is and that has become your shepherd. The guiding line, the comfort place, the support, the provider of the green pastures, the something that lays you beside still waters, that has become that. When all else is failing, I look at my wife and think, oh man, at least I have a loving wife. 
And that very day she fights with me for whatever reason. But anyway. <laughs> That's the day I, I count on my wife and she never, never disappoints me. I'm here as your wife, not as your confidence. <laughs> but here they are like, okay, I'm going to freeze this moment. I just don't want this to pass. This time of transfiguration, this experience, this miracle. Even Christians get addicted on miracles. Christians get addicted on certain things from God. Oh, God's presence was so much here. Or oh, the word of God was so igniting and things like that. We get hooked on certain things. And when we get hooked on certain things, and that certain thing gets tried. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. And when that gets striked, we get scattered. And when we get scattered, scattered is not a problem. No. Scattered is not the problem. When the scattered becomes shattered, that's when the problem comes. Amen. Here, when they were resting, trying to do this thing, well, <clears throat> fifth verse, go ahead, please. <clears throat> While he was oh, go ahead and read the fourth verse again, please. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if you wish. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. All right, look at this. The experience had changed. Now, <laughs> again, I want to see this thing again. This is another scattering that is happening. They had all these experiences. Okay, let me let me build the tabernacles. And we are, we are set, man. This man is uh, uh, um, the next prophet. We have him. We are all set. He is talking with Moses. He is talking with Elijah. Let me build him a tabernacle. We are set for life. We will be etched in the history of Torah. But hey, the, we, these are so and so's disciples. We got it covered, man. And now a voice comes from heaven saying, Hey, this is my beloved. Hear him. Uh, okay, what do I do now? This guy had nothing to do with the tabernacles. He didn't even say, don't build no tabernacles. The God's intervention, when it has come, he was like, what I mean by this is, what he is saying is, listen to him, hear him. What is he saying? There is more he has to do for you than you trying to freeze him. There is more God has to do into your life than you being worried about you are scared. Why did this happen to me? Why did this happen? Have I not done the right thing? Have I not done this? Have I not done that? We always do the postmodern. We try to figure out, have I not done this right? Maybe you are here because you've done it right. Mm -hmm. Have the disciples have done something wrong for them to be their disciple or Jesus' disciple? That's the best thing you can have, amen? Amen. amen. Yet, they are being scattered. Think about that. Because we are giving trust to somebody, we are admiring somebody, we are appreciating somebody, we are loving somebody, that doesn't mean you have done something wrong. Everything in our lives have a reason, have a purpose. They come, they play their role, and they leave. And when that witch is scattered, remember this thing. Je this, Jesus gives the uh, clear example. To, thank you, Lord. With those uh, uh, fish and bread. He gives instruction to the disciples, go gather. All the pieces that were left. Mm -hmm. He says, go gather them. And the Bible says they became 12 baskets. They became 12 baskets because they gathered them. Had they not gathered it, there won't be 12 baskets. 
What you are underestimating or are not understanding is just because you got scattered doesn't mean that is the end of the story. There is a repositioning with God. There is something God wants to do into your life to bring you back, to give, create a room for you, a, a form for you that is going to be glorious than ever before. Amen. Imagine that, that bread, the fish and uh, loaves a story imagine that that started with small things and now it got broken in other words it got scattered and then it went and fed all the thousands and then it came back again with 12 baskets had it not get scattered had it not get scattered, there is no way it's going to come back as 12 baskets. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And even during the scattering, that's what we see in the book of Acts. You will see them getting scattered time and time again. Time and time again, they get scattered. But they, didn't, they did not stop doing something while they were scattered. That is the most important part I want us to go after today. While we were scattered, don't let the devil shatter. We have to understand this thing. We will be disappointed. We will be discouraged. We will be put to the test of desolation or isolation and all those kinds of things. People will reject you. People will deny you. People will leave you. It's okay. And when that happens, you will be scattered. That is also okay. Because you will be baffled. You will be in that mindset. How could this happen to me? What did I do wrong? Even in many marriages, they're like, what did I do wrong? I never wanted this. All right, now let's go back to the book of... Um, here he, he gives that same instruction and they, they are like, man, what is happening here? Now let's go to the book of Ezekiel again now. Start with 16th verse again. Therefore say, thus says the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Mm -hmm. Therefore say, thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples, assemble you from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. Are you with me here? Mm -hmm. That which you scattered, I'm going to gather it. And now, after I gathered, I will give you the land of Israel, the land that is flowing with milk and honey. As is, you cannot have the land. And we all have to go through this scattering. God does this process of scattering so we may come back in a gathered form that he can give you the land. You know, it always blew my mind. God is promising Abraham, hey, this is your land, but I'm going to send your children 400 years into captivity. What is that? Yeah. That kind of sounds so sick. Mm -hmm. Why can't you give them now, Lord? Why do I have to go through this valley of shadow of death? Why can't I just go? I just want to jump from this mountain to that mountain. Though we may not be able to understand the whole purpose of those things, I want us to understand, I want us to know there, are to, there will be valleys in your life. There will be dips, there will be downs, there will be disappointments, there will be dis discouragements. And all I'm trying to say is, it's okay. It's okay when those things happen. Because God is gathering me back. Amen. God is picking me back. God is putting me back where I belong. He restores my soul and leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Glory be to God in heaven. He is gathering me back 
so I may have the land. Amen. Go ahead, read, keep reading. And they will go there, and they will take away all its detestable things, and all its abominations from there. All right, okay. He gives you, he, sometimes when he leads you to the scattering, you are also coming back to purge. You will never know what to purge in yourself until you go through scattering. Because they knew what was it without God and they know that place. And now when they are coming back to the land, they know, okay, this belongs elsewhere, not here. You know how hard it is, how tough it is when you got sick. That's why you can come to this place and say, sickness doesn't belong here. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. It's, a, it's a similar thing, an exposure. Mm -hmm. God exposes us to certain things so we may purge them. Many times God exposes you to things where you will understand what you should not be. God exposes us to these bad people or bad experiences, uh, the, the things that are of, of certain value in our lives, so we can come to a place where we should not be. Maybe you are depending on your paycheck too much that it got taken away. Now you need to realize, hey, it's not the paycheck I shouldn't be depending on, it's, not, it's my seed. Maybe I'm depending too much on my family that I should be coming to a place where I say, it's not the family I should be depending on, I should be depending on God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The idols getting shattered. What did the disciples do? They wanted to build an idol. To Jesus, I want to build a tabernacle in this transfiguration state. I want to freeze you here. That is how we create idols in our life. What is God doing? I'm going to shadow them all. I'm going to strike them. <laughs> you know, when, my, when the, uh, my, my kid is doing certain things, I take away certain things from her. Or uh, Sometimes... Uh, uh, my daughter is watching something on the TV or on, on, on her uh, phone. Um, the, her phone, not her phone technically. But anyway, um, when she is watching it, um, my son comes and says, uh, Oh no, you cannot watch this. And she try, he tries to take it away from her. And she screams. Because it's a kid, you're taking it away from me. Why are you taking it away from me? She screams and she gets mad and she starts crying and going through those things. But then I come in or mother comes in and she, we try to make sense to her. And many times she comes to me crying. They took that away from me. Mommy didn't want to do this with me. She comes to me. Then I tell her, Mama, we can have something else. And as I was speaking to her, as I give her that instructions, she will become happy again. She got scattered, but then she got gathered. <clears throat> uh, I'm going after something here. Um, go, go ahead, now finish this uh, um, uh, chapter, please. And then I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within them, and take the stony heart out of their flesh, and give them a heart of flesh. Okay, see the beauty there? He's transforming your heart even through your scattering. I will give you a new heart, new sensibilities, new sensitivities, new vision, new direction, new things are all happening when you are scattered. If only if you let the Lord work in you. If you let the scattered become the shattered, there is no coming back. That's exactly what the devil wants you. That which God has scattered, the devil wants to shatter it. 
And that's where you and me need to be very careful. When you get scattered, use that opportunity to build yourself. Go back to the Father. The same way my daughter, when she gets upset with anybody in the family, she runs to me. Because I am in her life. She, can, she believes that she can complain to me. She believes I will make it good for her. Make it better for her. Or she, will, she believes that I will make, her, make a way for her. I will give her back what, what was taken from her. Oh, keep reading, keep reading. That they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts follow the desire for their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their deeds on their own heads, so says the cool. Lord God. Look at that. When you get scattered, those things... You know, many people get addicted to ice cream. Many people addicted to get, get, get addicted to food or this or that or the pity party they live in. When they, get, when they get scattered and when they are living in that low life of their emotions, that scattered emotions, that's it. The devil has a, a, a hold over you. And God has no other choice but to give you over to the desires of your heart. Even though that is not God's plan, He is giving in to your desire. But there is always a way out for us. Go with me to the book of uh, uh, John 10th chapter, please. I'm ending here. John 10, 26. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, they follow me. They are following him even in the valley of shadow of death. Amen? Amen. Even in that position of scattering, they are still following. The key here is, but you do not believe. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. But if you are of his sheep, what would you do? Believe. You believe. The key ingredient that you need to have when you are scattered is belief Amen. for you to come back. Amen. If you don't believe in your father, if you don't believe in your God as your shepherd, there is no gathering back. The most important piece that you need when you are scattered. Right now, the most important thing the United States of America needs is believing in their father. Amen. Because right now, the scattering is happening. God is scattering. Amen. God is striking the shepherd. God, God has given those things. Everything that we think we can depend on has gotten down. Now it is time for us to believe. Not for us to get shattered because we are bringing it back. We are regrouping. We are gathering with the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, it is not Jesus who gathered it back into the baskets, but it is the disciples. It is us who is going to bring it back. It is us who is going to live back. It is us who is going to walk in this plan of restoration with God. Amen. Whether you like it or not, we are in a place of restoration. Restoration requires scattering. And that is what has happened right now. That is what is happening around right now. If only you believe. Amen. We might be walking through a valley of shadow of death. But it is okay. Believe. Amen. Because as you are walking through the valley of shadow of death in belief, you are going to be hearing the shepherd's voice. Then the shepherd's voice is going to restore things for you. Amen. 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 The many things that we have idolized, many people we may have idolized, all those things got hit. Strike the shepherd. Strike the shepherd. 
That's okay. It's coming back. Come on, somebody. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. And it has to come back from the pulpit. Yes. Amen. Amen. The, that's why I keep saying this thing. It is the spirit filled pulpit that made America great and it can make America great again. Amen. That is the spirit. That is the pulpit that made America great. Yes. Nothing else. No man made ideology. When the spirit of the Lord is falling on the pulpit, the glory of God is going to change this nation. Yes. Nothing else. The glory of God is going to change your life. Nothing else in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't need anything else. We don't want anything else but your glory, God. Amen. We need the Spirit of God. We need the Spirit-led pulpit. Again and again and again and again in Jesus' name. Amen. What is the need of this hour? The Spirit-led pulpit. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. America, you don't need the politicians. You don't need all the other things. You need the spirit-led pulpit. Yes. The spirit-led pulpit. The spirit of the living God who is breathing, who is rebuilding, that which has scattered, he is trying to gather, he is trying to bring it back to a greater level. Greatness. He is bringing his greatness. This is an hour for his greatness. If only you can believe. Remember that. When they got scattered, the people who did not go through the purging, they gave themselves to the idols. Yeah. But for you and me who believe in the living God, who believe in the God of restoration, he needs your belief right now more than ever before. Amen. Yes. Amen. When you are scattered, that's the most important time where you need to believe. Yeah, believe. That is the time for you to believe. When you get scattered, what are you going to do? You're going to believe. Because you're not going to let it shatter. Amen. Yes. You're not going to let you come to a place where you cannot be brought back. Amen. 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 Strike the shepherd. Let that be striked. Let whatever has happened, I don't care. I'm not going to worry about the idolization that I have done. I have given someone an exaltation, something an exaltation. But no, 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 sir. I am not bothered what happens. I'm going to continue to believe. Amen. And when you believe, you will see. You will see. You know, he says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow. And he says the next verse, 28. I and I give them eternal life. And then he says, they shall never perish. Amen. They shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Glory be to the king. Amen. Neither shall anyone snatch the United States of America from the hands of it, lo its Lord, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. It cannot Amen. be snatched. This nation, the United States of America, cannot be snatched away from the, Lord's, from the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the Lord of this land, and he will be the Lord of this land, and he shall continue to be the Lord of this land. Amen. Amen. You know why? He is not going to let that happen. Yeah. Amen. That's, right. That's why he needs us to be believing. Right. He needs a believer now. He needs you to believe. He needs the church in America to believe. Yeah. Believe, believe, believe. Believe in your father. Believe in his salvation. Believe in his restoration. Believe in his plan. Believe in his provision. Believe in his finances. Believe also in his glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Amen. Scattered does not and should not mean shattered. What is scattered is what the devil uses to shatter. Mm -hmm. What is scattered can always be brought together. Yes. Amen. Don't let the scattering moment be a shattered or no turning back moment. Yes. Amen. When all else leaves you shattered, it is your belief that brings you together. Amen. 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 
When all else leaves you scattered or shattered, it is your belief that brings you together. Amen. Amen. Don't leave that from your side, from your life, Amen. Hallelujah. from anything you're going through. Because you need to be brought together. I need to be brought together. God's plan is to gather me back. The people have deceived me. Preachers have deceived me. I have many, my, 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 my family may have deceived me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If only you can believe in him, he's going to gather back. Amen. He's going to restore back. Yeah. That is what Jesus gives the instruction to them. I'm coming back, y'all. Come on. I'm coming back. This is not it. This is not it. You will be scattered. But that's not the end game. Yes. That is not the end game. Amen. The end game is gathering. Yes. The end game is restoration. The end game is resurrection. Amen. Glory be to God in here. Amen. How many of you believe in resurrection? Amen. Our God is a God of resurrection. Yes. It is not over until he says it's over. Amen. He Amen. said I will resurrect you. I'm counting on it. Yes. I bet I'm banking on that. Yes. Glory be to God in heaven. God bless you. Amen. 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 Uh, well, Pastor Warren, please come and receive the offering. Before we leave, I want to give you an opportunity to have the guy who is going to bring you back together. Amen. Maybe your life got scattered. You didn't know how it has happened. But the Lord Jesus Christ is willing to gather you back. Amen. Yes. If you can give him a hand. If you can give him a shout out. He says, hey, I got you. Amen. I got you. I'm going to bring you together. Hallelujah. Now, all I'm asking you is to give him a shout. It's simple. It's simple. All you got to do is believe in your heart that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Savior. And confess it with your mouth and you will be saved. Amen. Let me lead you in prayer. Repeat this prayer after me with your heart. Believe in your heart. Confess it right now. Say this. Father, Father I, believe I believe Jesus, Jesus is my Savior. Is my, Savior. Is my Redeemer. Is my, Redeemer. Is my Lord. I am a sinner. A sinner. Forgive, me. Forgive me. I receive, I receive my, salvation. my salvation. I receive, I receive Jesus, Jesus come into my heart. Change my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you made that prayer, let us know. You are etched into the books, the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Amen. So we may rejoice with you. God bless you. Love you. Pastor Warren, it's your turn. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to say that to you. It's your turn. Amen. Amen. If you're hearing what we're saying today. It's your turn to step up to the plate and do what God's called you to do. Amen. Amen. So let's prepare our hearts for our tithes and offerings. And let's stand to our feet. Let's give God some honor and glory. Hallelujah. Isn't it good that we get to give? Amen. Amen. I want to remind everybody that it's so important giving today. Reminding you to pray for us. United America Tour. That we are getting on the, we are, we already started, but we're on the verge of hitting this nation. Anybody believe that this nation needs to hear what was just preached Amen. at this altar today? Woo! Amen. It's a coming back, a renewing of God's faith in our hearts, yeah. and it will resonate throughout the land if we get our job done. And this pulpit's job is to go. And I, right now, I support going to every every state. Amen. Not one, Amen. every state, 50 all, states. all 50 Amen. states need to hear Amen. the voice of God. We need something to change. And I heard someone say, well, what about the separation of church and state? That's a lie from the pit of hell. I'll tell you right now, my people perish from a lack of knowledge. You need some knowledge. When Thomas Jefferson wrote that letter to the church, he was writing it to give the confidence and assurance that the government will not try to take the church out, but to have a separation so the church can have its voice raised and be the leader in, in educating the God's people yeah. so we can make godly laws and that the laws throughout the land would be have God's stamp on it and not take the power away from the church. It was to help the church, not to hurt the church. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And that is so important today. When we're going out, we need to know the truth. Amen? Amen. So if you're going to give today, 
understand that you're given to something that's so important. Today, the message of God has to go out. And the pulpit has to lead the government, not the government lead the church. Because you see what's happening. Open your eyes. Have some faith in God. He will make a way where there is no way. Yeah. So if you're going to give online, it's covenantfusion.com. And you can hit the give button. So I want to pray as you give right now as we get ready to give. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be able to give into your kingdom, Father. That we will be able to touch people's lives eternally, Lord, with the finances that come in. That we will be able to go through all 50 states because of people who hear your voice right now and support this ministry. I pray for our cups will fill up and overflow with abundance. Whether it's your job that you work for somebody, whether it's a business that you own, whether it's something you love to do or don't like to do, I pray that the financial blessings will come in an overflowing form into your lives right now as you hear God's word and you give into this ministry. As you give into the call that you will support the kingdom work. Yes, I believe that our needs are met he knows the desires of our hearts, but I believe that the finances we have are meant to do more than just take care of ourselves or put food in our stomach, but it's to put the spirit-filled word of God into every ear in this country and around Amen. the world. Amen. Amen. I pray for those who support it right now, God. May the blessings of heaven come down and fall upon them and their family in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, let's give. Amen. Amen. Glory Jesus. to God. Glory to God. Jesus. Well, I'm so excited that you joined us today. I want to remind everybody that Bible study, Wednesday night, 7-11, join us to hear the Word of God. We need it today more than ever. I'm going to keep saying that. Come and join us. And if you can come physically, if you're in Central Florida, Orlando, Florida, and you want to come, uh, go to our website and get our address, make a phone call, call us. We'd be more than happy to tell you how to get here. But if not, join us live. We'd love to share this time with you, and we're yeah. excited about what God's going to do yeah. in your life, like Absolutely. we're excited about what they're doing in our lives right here. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get ready to close right now, and it's uh, our confession of faith. And if it's on the screen, on the count of three, please repeat it with me. Ready? One, two, three. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing and we are filled for His glory. God bless you, love you. I want to remind you, HR5, the Equality Act, step up to the plate, Christians. Use the rights that this government has given you, your voice. You has a right. Address it to your local congressman, senator. Have some knowledge on what's going on, and we, the people, will have the right results. Do not allow the government to force its will on you, but our will on the government because we are the ones who have the control. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Love you, sir. Talk to you. Bye-bye.